Hello and welcome back to Hashtag Real Estate. We're taking a look at when the right time is to get out of a property investment. And joining us in studio is Ricardo Teixeira. He's Chief Operating Officer at BDO Wealth Advisors. Ricardo, welcome to the studio. Thank you, Sipoho. Nice Good. to be here. Good there. Ricardo, tell me, uh, timing the market and timing the market, what does it mean? I think that's a good place to start. I mean, the two are very different. The words are very similar. But the one is actually then being invested versus mm -hmm. actually how much time actually are you spending in the market in terms of extracting value. And for me, the two, those are very good principles around investment, whether it's property or whether it's passive. Um, it's one, the decision to be in the game and one to be how long will you be in the game for. Hmm. You've spoken of passive. I understand there's passive um, you know, property and business property. Give us a diversion between the two. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's, it's a, it's a, I think it's an important distinction to be made when you're looking at property. That mm -hmm. concept of whether it's a passive investment or, just, or it's a business asset. Yeah. And that concept of passive, as we know, it just produces a return, produces income without you having to put in too much effort. It's almost you're taking a back seat and there's a return that you are going to realize as an investor on a passive basis basis. A, an, an actively managed uh, business asset, like a portfolio of physical property, actually requires attention to actually run the business. It requires manpower, it requires your input, your intellectual capital, it requires a bit of risk and it requires a whole lot of different dynamics. And that would also potentially, you could argue, would produce some stream of passive income, but it's your level of effort that would be very different in terms of comparing the two of passive versus a business asset. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let me jump in there, um, um, Ricardo, and I'm, I'm very interested in your, in your property story because sure. um, to a lot of our viewers out there, uh, many of them at this particular point in time might um, be employees, like you were an employee when you, when you started. Just, I, I want to understand what led you down the path that you took to build a property portfolio over the 15 years that, that you've mm. done so. What, what, what um, decisions um, and um, uh, uh, options did you right. look at that led you down that route? Right, yeah. so it's, it's, a, it's a long story, I suppose, I mean, but the, but the brief um, sort of um, insight that I could share with you, Semi, on that was that two things for me. One, there was always a passion for producing some form of passive income. Mm. And uh, that's what we were talking about now, it's more around the passive income stream. And that was one driver for me. And the second was my passion for seeing value in the city of Johannesburg mm -hmm. as a destination or a location. Mm -hmm. And those two were quite instrumental in my journey of building a property portfolio. Um, and I think in my role as a certified financial planner and uh, having gained the experience in advising clients at BDO on their wealth planning, there's a lot of uh, sort of learnings that I've taken from that practical experience of actually building passive income, which, like I've said earlier, is no longer passive. It's actually a business asset. Mm. And, and I think so, you asked me about my story getting, getting into a property portfolio. I think everyone would have their own story, but ultimately the, the wealth creation factor is often a commonality, but it's understanding how you use that uh, portfolio to generate wealth is quite key to unlock. And there's a lot of misconceptions about property being a passive uh, portfolio or passive investment stream. I mean, you've spoken uh, about wealth creation. Mm. So, I mean, a lot of viewers at home, the point want to create eventually wealth. Mm. But I've realized with some of them actually miss out uh, on the wealth because they misuse the wealth. They don't know how to uh, properly structure the wealth as far as pu uh, putting it onto their asset is concerned. True. I mean, um, True. tell us a bit in terms of uh, protection measures on how people could protect their wealth as far as property is concerned. So there's a, there's a couple of mechanisms and I think so we can start with one, it's the ownership structure for your property. Okay. It, that's a key starting point. How do you actually physically own that property will and could create risk for you in terms of that protection. Um, so typically you'd want to have a, have a ring fence in a, in a legal entity so that you have the protection from creditors. Um, then you start looking at the protection of the physical asset, Tiboho, in terms of actually mm -hmm. how, how to replace the asset if it's no longer here, if there's a national disaster or if there's a dis destruction. It's also replacing the income stream um, to say, well, if, the, um, if, if in the event that there is no revenue, no cash flow, but I've got liabilities which I need to settle, how do I mitigate that risk from an insurance perspective? There's protecting of that. There's also protection of the the individual running the portfolio, or individuals running the portfolio. So whether that's a management team, or it's a staff complement, or it's the directorship in the mm. business, everyone has their role. What happens if that person's not there? What liability do you take on as the property owner to continue earning the rental income? Mm. 
Mm. And uh, so, so that would be another example of, of ensuring and protecting um, sort of the, the business asset. Yeah, I mean, you spoke of liability, you spoke of risk. Those are the two things that, that are standing out for yeah. me. I mean, what are some of the risks that uh, commonly you'd find um, investors would do? Uh, or they would um, be exposed to as far as investing in properties concerned? Sure, there's a lot. Uh. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot, yeah. So I think yeah. for me, a top, a top few risks would be, I think, not understanding the, the numbers and not understanding the mechanics of property. So yeah. understanding how you extract value would be, would be a fundamental risk. Yeah. Um, it's often seen that there's an unlimited supply of tenants, yeah. let's say, in your, in your property portfolio. But if you don't understand truly the market that you're targeting and the sector of property and what the willingness or the ability of that sector is to pay rent, mm. you could find yourself in quite a surprise uh, or quite a difficult position where you've misread the market and you've overcapitalized. So mm. it's the balancing act of saying, not only understanding what does the market afford and what are they willing to pay, but also what is it going to cost you to produce that asset so that that can be used for what that market is willing to pay for it. Hmm. Uh, so now for entry um, level investors, I mean, what, what would be your advice um, to them in terms of now um, putting together a structure for them that will best work for them? Obviously, bearing in mind that um, their capital might be at the minimal, for instance, uh, to start sure. investing in property. Sure. Yeah. So I think, think irrespective of the capital, you can start, there's always a place to start. And it's mm -hmm. cutting the cloth to fit your, your it's wallet. Ex it's exactly that space that, it's, uh, that, that we want exactly. to start. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's um, don't, be, don't shoot too big, so be realistic about it. But a couple of fundamentals that I've learned and I can share um, is, is really looking at understanding the, the market that you're operating, uh, understand the, lo the location, and understand the dynamics of that environment. Uh, um, I think for me, property and uh, as, a, as a wealth advisor now, mm -hmm. and advising clients, is there's this dynamic of an, or a theme of art versus the science of property right. investing. And I think the three of us can talk around the science, the theory, and the, the numbers. Mm -hmm. But the art of, in, of investing into property is often which comes from an individual perspective. And you and I, the three of us, will see it very differently. And it's that perspective that you want to capitalize on. And I think every, everyone that's passionate about property can have their own view and should have their own view on where they see value and go and extract it. But start with what you can afford. Mm. Yeah. So you started in, um, in Joburg 15, 15 years ago, That's right. um, and um, you mentioned that um, one needs to basically look at specific areas from a, uh, a different perspective, different eyes, as, as, as you put it. Yeah. Um, what, what in particular attracted you to the areas that, that you invested in? in, in and, and I'm asking that so that we can um, impart some knowledge to our viewers in terms of things that they need to look out for to build such a property portfolio mm. like you have. Mm. Okay, thanks for asking. Um, so the the story that I can share, quite a personal story, is that I was uh, doing articles at the time uh, at an accounting firm, um, and we were based in the Colton Centre, and that was in the early 90s. And at that stage, if you recall, you cast your mind back to what Johannesburg was at that era, it was at its lowest point. It was dirty, it was, um, people were fleeing out of Joburg, and it was quite, quite a dull place to be in. And I remember clearly at the time, um, I came across an article coincidentally that I read and reflected on about the New, uh, New York City. And, and I started reading about it and I started drawing similarities between what Joburg, what I was seeing as Joburg in the 90s and what had happened in New York, I think was in the 70s or the uh, early 80s. Um, and it just, it just inspired me in terms of actually saying, well, actually there's cycles to cities, to urban living. And if New York went through that and London's gone through that, um, and I'd never visited those cities at the time. I thought, well, there must be something here that Joburg is no different. We must be going through that. And this is the low point. And I think what it triggered then, Semi, to your question is that I looked at the city of Joburg with different eyes. And I thought, well, what are we missing? If everyone's fleeing and leaving Joburg, what's the alternative use? And that led me down the path of uh, residential accommodation in Johannesburg, which is now very, very w in good supply in the city. And there's a lot of property developers providing uh, that type of accommodation. But it was looking at the city with different eyes that led me down that path of opportunity, I think. So mm. you got in at the right time, <laughs> <laughs> in essence. Yes, Ricardo said looking at the city with different eyes. We're going to be back right after the break. <laughs> 